I have a very exciting package addressed to me from Mr. Greg Davil. For those of you that don't know who Greg is, he is an amazing electronics engineer, hardware engineer. He works with uh, FPGAs and all sorts of stuff. I'll put all of his contact details in the description below, including a link to this product that is on Tindy. I did not buy this, he sent this to me. I believe he sent it to me even before he listed it on Tindy. Let's uh, open it up and have a look inside what it is. Oh, I just stabbed myself with my knife. I thought the lid was on and I went to take it off. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Ow. <laughs> I'm so excited about this that I stabbed myself. Okay, this is a kit and it's an amazing kit. It looks amazing. Oh, it's even got a little digi key bag and some pins are broken through. That's cool. So this is a Christmas ornament. Now, as many of you know, I don't celebrate Christmas. And uh, I think Greg did try to get this to me in time for Christmas just so I could build it for Christmas. But it got to me a little bit late and then it's been sitting on my couch for a little while. Sorry, Greg. But I wanted to build it because I'm really excited by it. And I also wanted to promote it on the Tindy store because it looks absolutely amazing. I'm just going to uh, zoom in a bit. Okay, so this is some PCB art that Greg did. Look at that. Get the nice light on it so you can see. It's a Christmas ornament, LED lit. And as you can see, the back is where all the LEDs go. There's an on-off switch and there's a battery mount clip that's got some sticky on the back. I wonder if that came that way or whether we did that, I don't know. And so it's a fairly simple build, it's just a whole bunch of LEDs that I believe have to go on upside down uh, with a switch on the side. And then the LEDs light through this amazing looking PCB. How fantastic does that look? I was really inspired by the images that he showed on Twitter of the build and I'm very thankful that he sent one through and even like all of the design inside the actual star shape is made of little squares. Can you see that? Simply amazing. So I am going to build this now and light it up and see how it looks. And again, I apologize for not building this sooner, but you know, better late than never. I'm going to maybe do this on my cork. Okay, got all my stuff ready. I have no idea if there are any instructions for this. I mean, I believe all the LEDs are the same. Wait, what are these LEDs? These don't look like normal LEDs. What are they? I'm going to have to open one up and have a look. Now, I believe there are extra LEDs, just in case. Oh, wow, these are square LEDs. Okay, let me see if I can get a bit closer on this. These are little square-shaped LEDs. I've not seen these before. I'm sure many of you have. How cool does that look? Okay, so, at least the Positive and negative is clearly marked. Are they clearly marked on the PCB? Let's have a look. Yes, there's a little bit of a, an arrow. So I assume the arrow needs to match. And they go on upside down, I believe, like that. This is going to be fun. So I know a few people have done PCBs with upside down LEDs. I have not built one before. So this could go very bad or very good. I don't know. Super keen to see how this turns out. Just take that off. I'm just going to start with one, see how easy it is to put on, and what better one to do than that one there. Let's just start with one. I should get some thinner solder. It's quite thick. Now, because the LED is going to sit slightly above, because of the package size, I might need to use even more solder. It looks okay, maybe. Let me just get the other one, other side on. I really hope I'm doing these the right way. Okay, a bit more on this side. What I should probably do is light it up and see if it works, which means I probably need to put the switch on first and then I can insert some power from a bench power supply and I can see if it works. So let's, because I don't want to put all the LEDs on and realize I put them all on wrong. That's also an interesting slide switch. It's quite large, larger than the ones I normally use, but it's only three feet, so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's get some solder on these pads. Probably should have 
done this other way around. Makes sense to do it that way, I think. It's got the nice registration holes. Put some pressure on it to make it go flat when I hit it. There we go. Nice. Okay, I'm turning my bench supply on. Now, it uses two AAA batteries. I believe they're 1.2 volts each. So that'll be 2.4 volts. Interesting. Might just power it at 3 volts just to, to see what happens. And we'll do some current limiting on it. Okay, so 3 volts. There's no power going through yet, obviously. I don't know if I'll be able to see it from the front. Alright, good. The switch works because it's in the off position right now. So let's switch that over. And it lights up. Excellent. So it's on the correct way. I'm not going to do a reveal of the back yet, but we know we're going in the right direction. You see, I learned a thing or two from most of you on my channel who, you know, Dave Darko would have been screaming at me if this was a live stream. Test them first, test them first, rather than just put them all on straight away. I believe there are extras, so I won't pull them all out. I believe there are three extras. Here we go. Okay, so let's start doing lots of one side of them. I want a pretty decent sized blob. So it's got to reach the whole way. Should turn that off while I'm at it, just before I forget. This is kind of like a soldering Saturday, but on a Friday. I'm being nice and liberal with the solder blobs. Is that all of them? That looks pretty good. Just to make sure I have enough. Okay. I'm going to try to use my ceramic tip tweezers. They're much harder to work with just in terms of my um, muscle memory on the tweezers compared to my other ones. They're, they're much wider and fatter, a bit more awkward, but they also don't stick to the metal areas, which is kind of nice. So I'll give it a go. If it's too clunky, I will swap them back. So they're all facing the same way, all the arrows are pointing the same direction. Thank you very much for uh, designing them like that. Yeah, okay. Oop. Okay, I might have just burnt some plastic on this LED. I can smell it. Um, I might put that LED aside. Yeah, I'm going to go back to my other tweezers. Sorry, folks. They're just too awkward for me. I'm just not used to them. I'm going to put that aside just in case. Lucky there's some extras. Okay, you just get very used to working, again, in a certain way like with your muscle memory. That first one went on nice and easy but these ones are not going on so easy. Lulled myself into a false sense of confidence. Once I put the other sides on they should be fine. Yeah, I can smell burning plastic. I think I'm um, potentially melting them. I don't know. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> Maybe again I should do another test. I'll get these three on and then I'll do a test and make sure that I'm not melting the plastic. Nice challenge. Okay. We solder the other sides of them. And I guess they don't have to be perfectly placed in the middle, as long as they connect okay. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, let's turn it on. Let's make sure all three of them are lighting up. Two of them are lighting up. So obviously there's no connection on this side. Let's see if I can fix that. Let's try that again. Definitely looks like it's soldered on this side. Nope. Maybe we're sitting too high. Fingers crossed. I don't knock all the LEDs off the board as well. That's not very straight that one, I know. Okay, excellent. That's three. Confidence is building slowly. Let's keep going. By the way, I could have just stuck paste on all the pads and reflowed them, you know. That would be a Sion thing to do. I mean, to be fair, these aren't really designed to go on upside down. Whoops. They're still smell a bit of burnt plastic. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Anyone see that? They went flying. 
I'll flip over. The cork is not good for flipping components, by the way, but it is good to protect my mat underneath, which is not silicon. Okay. Try to keep the iron tip clean if I can. See, some of these are going on super smooth. And some of them, well... Now what is nice about putting them on upside down is that you can always see their orientation clearly. Because the, up, the marking is on the bottom, if I was to flip them the other way around, I wouldn't be able to visually tell which way is the correct way. So I'm sure there's some way from the top view to be able to recognize their orientation. Maybe, like maybe there's a darker patch on one side of the LED. But I don't have to worry about that. Does anyone know what package size these are? I'd love to know. They're obviously not a standard package, I don't think. Okay, just put the iron down for a second. Let me just double check all of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, cool. So let's now do the other sides, shall we? Okay. This part will hopefully be easier. And hopefully I haven't put any of them on back to front. That would suck big time. I'd probably have to pull out the hot air gun at that point. I've breathed in heaps of flux. So I'm going to test this again before I put the battery clip on, but I'm not going to flip it yet, still. Just to make sure that they're all working. Okay, here we go. They are all, no, top left. Just here. God, how bright are they? Wow. Okay, let's fix that one. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it. It could just be, all oh, right clicked it down, which means it was not attached very well. Dab more solder there. Last test before we put the battery in and flip it. Nope. That LED is still not working. Oh, did everyone just see that? These are color changing LEDs. I did not know that. Wow. Okay, anyway, I still need to fix that one LED. Why is it not working? Maybe I killed it. It's quite possible that I Killed it. There were some spares. Let me just try one more time. One last try. If that doesn't work, I'll take it off and I'll put a different one on. Okay, that worked. Cool. So, I'm quite surprised how bright these are for 3 volts. And it's pulling about, uh, well obviously it depends on the colour. It's about 80 milliamps right now. It's gone down to 68. Now up to 100, okay, 210, 220. Obviously, depending on the colour, will change how much power it uses. Wow, that's a lot of milliamps though. wonder how long the battery's going to last. Okay, so it's time to solder the battery on and get some batteries. So, first let's solder it on. Stay. Okay. So I lost some footage. It happens. The uh, last file in the sequence when I was recording soldering these pads here. It's corrupted, it didn't copy over properly, I couldn't recover it. So you didn't get to see me solder these or switch it on or reveal it. So I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> so here it is. It's the, uh, the final piece, it's been soldered on. I didn't stick the sticky tape down on the back here, just in case I needed to do anything with the LEDs and have to remove this off again. But it's ready to go, it's ready for the reveal. I'm going to just pull the camera back. This is my second reveal, actually. I'm just going to get rid of that. It's my second reveal, but it's your first. I'm very excited to show it to you. Ready, set, go. Look at that. That looks amazing. Let's just turn this light off, shall we? It's going to go bright. Now, I seem to have a, a funky LED in the top left corner here. 
on some of the color cycles it turns off so maybe one of the LEDs inside the package is blown I don't know although it seems to be able to do the other colors quite well and of course they're all going at different rates this one here is the super fast one it cycles colors much faster than the rest of them but over time they all cycle out of sequence and then you just get random colors everywhere right now some of them are sticking together quite nicely I'm not sure what the exact intent is with them I don't know how they really cycle I haven't looked into what the LEDs are I would assume that every one would be slightly different see that it popped out then and it'll pop back in a second it's like it can't maybe do the blue I'm not sure so I'll have to swap that one out later but that is just an amazing looking Christmas ornament if I had a tree I'd be super proud to hang this on a tree and uh, what I might do is hang it on my review mirror in my car <laughs> and then let people freak out when they see it hanging there when I'm stopped at the lights that'd be funny anyway that's it everyone that is the build what a beautiful looking PCB really well designed apart from my hacky soldering job on the LEDs it was pretty straightforward to do and it just really looks amazing really nice finished board I urge you all please to go and check the description below for the Tindy link to this and maybe grab one and support Greg he's an amazing hardware engineer he works on really inspiring projects check him out on Twitter with the again the link below and follow all of his FPGA and PCB stuff he, he works at super small BGA level and just super inspiring anyway that's it thank you all for watching don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you all next time. Merry Christmas for 2019!